Okay, so again, a facelift and a neck lift really addresses uh, the face from about the level of the lower eyelids, but not really making adjustments to the eyelids, but from this level um, all the way down to the jawline, that's really the facelift portion, and then from the jawline down to the neck, that's the neck lift portion of it. Um, they really almost always go together. It's so rare that we would separate the two because almost anybody who is aging in their upper face and their face has aging in their neck. The structures are all contiguous. They blend from uh, one anatomic region to another anatomic region in certain planes. And really in order to get the best result in the neck, you need to make changes and support in the upper face and vice versa. Um, but what things are not covered in the face and the neck lift? Well, uh, one thing that is not covered is the position of the eyebrows. Um, often people who are seeking a facelift and a neck lift have either straight brows or descended brows and they're looking for uh, a natural yet a more lifted position, a more natural arch to their brows. And the way that we handle that is with a brow lift. So there are a different, uh, there are a variety of different techniques um, to approach a brow lift. The two most common uh, in my practice are an endoscopic brow lift. Um, I like to do a five port endoscopic brow lift so that a very small incision is made here, here, and here uh, in the hairline, very difficult to see afterwards. Um, and through those incisions and the use of a specialized camera at the end of a tube called an endoscope, um, I can see underneath the skin uh, and I can elevate the tissues at a very deep level all the way down to the eyebrows. And then I go off to the side of the temple region as well so that we get a full and uniform lift. Uh, it augments the kind of lift that you get from the facelift because you're already um, pre-lifting, if you will, uh, the tissues of the face and so the face lift actually adds to that and gets a much more thorough natural lift um, and then clearly there's the positioning of the eyebrow um, and creating a nice arch to the eyebrow as well so that's a brow lift not traditionally part of a face and a neck lift but it is something that is done very frequently with a face and a neck lift uh, other um, other procedures that are not traditionally a part of a face and a neck lift. It's, it's not part of that terminology, but are done very frequently uh, at the same time as a face and a neck lift are upper lid blepharoplasties and lower lid blepharoplasties. Those procedures are designed to remove excess skin and some wrinkles from around the eye. Definitely gives a very more youthful, energetic appearance. Um, and that, again, is something that we do relatively frequently with a face and a neck lift. Um, so it is very feasible to do a face and a neck lift, an endoscopic brow lift, upper and lower lid blepharoplasty. Sometimes people call them lid lifts. Um, that's something very feasible to do together. Now, I had mentioned endoscopic brow lift and I had also stated that there is a temporal brow lift. A temporal brow lift is one in which you're really seeking only to elevate the lateral brow. It involves um, relatively small incisions within the hair and instead of using an endoscope uh, under direct vision and with different elevators and scissors, you can dissect down to the lateral portion of the brow and really just focus your lift there. It doesn't really give you as much lift to the temples. Um, I feel like that is not as useful as a, um, as a endoscopic brow lift, but there are patients for whom I do think it's the best procedure and obviously that's sort of a customized decision that we make in our consultation.